this. Okay. So this is what we did in our last training. And in this lesson, we'll continue for more advanced things on roads. For, so for that purpose, what I'll do, first of all, I will go to file, save as, I will save this project, open a new folder, we'll call it lesson four. And here, name the project lesson four as well. And here it is. Now we have a replica of the original project. Now the name is lesson four. Okay, so I use file save as, and this is the project which I'm gonna work on. First of all, I will go to layer. So the subject here, roads, advanced features, advanced features. And we will start by repeating the process of designing a road, which we did last in the last training. So I'll do the same. I will add another road here. I will make the CL as current. And then I'll do a polyline that start, let's say, from here. Go from here till here somewhere. Sorry, let me remove the object snap. Here and end up on this road here. Okay, and this will be sort of a highway or a speedway, this one. So I will enter to the roads. Sorry. I will enter to the roads. We have the main, which is this one. We have the T1, which is this one. And I will add another one. We'll call it highway, HW. Sorry. Highway. And on this road, go to horizontal alignment. Go to the highway. Select the polyline. Enter again. Apply and I will get one, two, and three IPs, right? This is what we did exactly the same which we did in the last session. Now, here I'll create a road, uh, sorry, a curve of 400 meter. Okay, this is a road of 400 meter. It's too close here. Let's move the IP a little bit. Take the IP. I'll use move here. How do I move the IP? Just to remind you all, I'm going to roads, horizontal alignment. Then in the lower window, I'm pressing the move. I'm going to the IP because the command line say polygon in, polygon out, or a single point. I'm moving a single point. I'm moving this point. And he asked me from where? I said from here. Let me stretch it a little bit because it's too close here. Let me stretch it a little bit to here. Okay. And then if I will apply and apply again, I should see the movement. Let's see. Okay. Everything changed. Good. Now it's better. But now I want to also create a transition. This is the Tangent curve. This is the tangent point, right? I don't need it anymore. This is the tangent curve point, and I want to call create a transition curve here using a clotoid. So the transition here, the runoff, would be from here to here. Let's say one of of thirty meter in and the same one same runoff same transition i would do here 30 meter here how do i do it standing on the same row of the ip this is ip3 and entering the clotter so press apply 
when I should see the transition from here to here. Okay, good. So this is the transition. Starting from here, this is the tangent, this is a straight line, starting from here. And from here, we start the transition of 30 meter. This is the transition, plot wave, and then to the curve itself, right? Any questions so far? Any questions about how to create the transition? So it's a transition of 30 meter. Any questions, guys? Nothing. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to the vertical alignment. I'm pressing apply. I'm getting the existing ground level. Write what the software did when I pressed apply here in this table. It digitized all the elevation along the road and gave me the existing ground level. And let me do my own design. Start from here, going somewhere. Sorry. Here and end up here. I press OK, apply. And then I see I get the data and let's uh, do a vertical curve of radius of, sorry, of length of 100 meters. Uh, okay, you know what? Let me change it a little bit. I want to add another vertical IP here. So what I'll do, I come here, I'll do a break here at this point, okay? Let me divert, take the ver edit, put it here. Like this one. Okay, so I have added another vertical IP. I have to press apply. So it will be reflected in the table. Okay, excellent. And now let me add another 100 meter here as well. Oh, okay. Any question about this one? Guys. Any questions? Feel free to ask. Feel free to ask any questions. So I understand everything is understood. So this is the profile. Now, okay, someone asked a question. Can you repeat this? Okay, which of the one, how did I, what exactly to repeat? Repeat how I did the road or how do I add the vertical curve? What is the, exactly do you want me to do? Vertical alignment. Okay, vertical alignment, what I did, you know what? Let's do it from start. I will remove everything, all the data. I click X here, design, apply, and okay. This is the clear situation. When I entered here, I pressed apply and I got the existing ground level here on the lower left, right? Which was translated into this profile. Now I have a layer named ver edit is where I design. I start with a regular polyline. I decided to start with the existing ground level because here I connected to some kind of a path 
So here we start with the existing and end up with the existing here. So I'll start in the existing here. And let me remove the object stack. I go more or less to this point. And from here, I'll go again here. And I'll press apply and apply again. And all the data from the profile, sorry, from the polyline were translated into a vertical alignment. We see the data here. This is the elevation in the beginning. And this, the running station and the slope between segments. Here, I want to add a vertical curve here. So this is the second IP, right? This is 567.95, which is this one. 567.95. How do I do it? Stand on the 2T, which is the length of the curve and change it to 100 meter and press apply and apply again. Now I'll get a curve of 100 meter here. Here it is. This is the curve. Right, this is the curve. But now I decided that I'm unhappy. So I want to change it a little bit. How do I do it? First of all, I will take this IP and move it to here. And when I press apply, all the data in the lower table and in the alignment will change. Okay, everything changed to here. And the second thing that I want to do is to enter into break the slope here, one grade and another grade to have less cut area here. So I'll do a break. How do I do it? In the AutoCAD, break command. I want to break the ver edit, which is this one, and I want to break it here. Good. So now I have two polyline. So I'll take this polyline and move it to where I want to break, let's say here, and take this one. I want to move it from here to here, and that's it. When I press apply, actually the software scan the ver edit layer, ver edit layer, and take all the data from the ver edit layer and convert it into a profile. So how do I do it? It will do it in the table below. Now, since in the table below, we have 100 meter length for the first IP, it remain. Now I want to enter a curve here as well. Again, 100 meter here. I hope this is clear. If not, let me know. Anyone? Do you want me to repeat it? Do you have any question about what I've, you just saw? No questions. Anyone, this is the time. You can speak up, you can chat, whatever you want. Nothing. Okay. I close this. I'm going to the cross sections. Okay. Let me remind you. What I'm doing, designing the cross sections of this road. So I'm going to cross sections. I'm pressing define sections and I press OK. So now I got all the cross section on the table on the right. So this was the first step. First of all, to build the table. Then I'm going to get the topo data of all these sections. I press get topo. And it goes, it goes minus 20 plus 20 and give me the existing ground level. In fact, I can go now and scroll with the arrow down between the support sections. Now I want to start designing my template of the cross sections. 
I'm moving this existing table into structure. This was designed. So structure is the top, design is the subgrade, the airfox level. I'm starting with the structure. And what I'll do, I'll do this, this thing. This is a road, where is it? This is the road, right? It turned here to the left. On the left lane, I will put a sidewalk. On the right lane, I'll just do a shoulder goes into a ditch, side ditch. So how do I do it? I'll start from zero, zero, which is the crown level point. You know what? I see that I'm walking with a very high resolution. Let me, so you can see my screen better. Let me close and change the resolution into something which is, you can see better. Let me change this to something that other can see. I hope now the fonts are better. And let me open this project again. Okay, now I'm going into the cross section. Yeah, now I think you'll see better everything. Okay, and let's go to road, not main. Click to the road, which I'm interested, highway, HW. Okay, this is the road. So first of all, I change this to the structure. And I started by zero, zero, right? Which is the crown level. And I will start to the left lane. Left lane, I want to create a sidewalk. Now I want two lanes. So it will be 7.2 meter, 3.6 plus 3.6, right? It's what I used, or I, I used 3.65. What did I use? 3.65, you know what, let's stick to it. So minus 7.3, okay, two lanes, and goes of a slope of 2.5%. And I'm telling the software, this is the asphalt. Now I'm here, right? From here, okay, this is the closing, let's ignore this. I want to go up by 50, 15 cm up and do a sidewalk of two meter with a slope going to this point, to the drainage. So it will be zero and 15 cm step to the sidewalk. Then, so from here, I'm going 15 cm up, I don't know, somewhere here. And from here, I want to go two meter. So minus two, two and a half meter and the slope will be two and a half percent to the road. Here it is. I went up 15 cm and from here I went two and a half meter with two and a half percent to this spot, which is the drainage spot. I hope you can follow. And I want to end up here. You can either here because I do land development here, or you know what? Let's tell the software if you are cut, you are cutting it one to four and fill it one to one, like this. Fine. Let's design now the side, right side. Right side, I'm also doing two lanes, so it's B7.3. Also go by minus two five five. <coughs> Because I'm taking the uh, 
Okay, but here I'll continue with shoulders of 1.5 meter with same 2.5% and close with a cut and fill of one to one and one to one, like this. Okay, so unlike left where I have sidewalk here, I'm going two and a half meter shoulders, one, and a, sorry, 7.3 meter and one and a half meter. Any questions about what you just saw? Any question? This is the time because I want to continue. And I know it's, this is quite confusing. So it's very important to, to, to listen carefully and to ask questions. Anyone? Any questions? So if there are no questions, I assume everything is clear. All of you understand, okay? One second. Okay. So this is my section. Now I want to design, design the subgrade. How do I do it? I'm starting from here, from zero. And from here I'm going, let's say the total thickness is 50 cm. 0.5. And from here, I want to go to the left. Now, I don't want to end up after 7.3 meter, which is this spot. I want to enter 20 cm inside the sidewalk. So I'll go to the left instead of 7.3, I will go 7.5. 20 cm inside the sidewalk with a slope of 2.5. So I'm here somewhere, let's see it. Okay, ignore the rest because the software has to close somewhere. I continued until this point, 20 cm inside. Now from here, I want to go by one to one. to the sidewalk and end up 20 cm below the structure, the sidewalk structure, top level. It's not structure, the sidewalk top level. How do I do it? So let's calculate. Now I'm 0 0.5 meter below. And I want to reach 20 cm and this is 15 cm. So if I have 0 0.5, I have to go, if I go 0 0.5, I would be in 15 cm. So I have to go 0 0.45. So what I'll do, minus 0 0.45, go 45 centimeter to the left and go 45 centimeter up, 0 0.45, which is actually 100%. So this is what I did. Okay, tell the software from here, go 35 centimeter and up 35 centimeter. Why? Because I want it to be 20 cm below. Why 45? This is 0 0.5, it's minus 0 0.5, and this is 50 centimeter up. If I go 45, I will be at 15 cm plus 5 cm, totally 20 cm here. I hope you can follow. And from here, let me continue. This is 7.3 plus 2.5, this is 9, 9.8. And here I have 7.95. So if I take a calculator and tell the software, totally I have 7.3 plus 
2.5, I'll take 9.8 minus 7. Point five, which is I have what I have here, minus zero point forty five. I have one eighty five. So from here up to this point, it's one point eighty five. Here it is. Now you might send, you see, up to here. And from here, it opened at one to one and closed. So with what this is what I did. This is it. I'm happy. And from here, I'm telling the software cut one to one, one to one. Good. Okay, now let's see what's going to the right. To the right, to the right, I'm starting with, here it's simpler because I'm going parallel to the structure. 7.3, minus 2.5, 1.5, I'm just copying from here, it's the same. 1.5, one, 1 minus 2.5, and again close at one to one, to one to one. Okay. Any questions about what you saw up to now? Feel free. If you want me to explain something, how did I do the calculation or anything, just let me know. This is the time to ask. Don't be shy. This is the time. I know that first time to, to see it in the first time, it's not easy. So please ask the question if you don't have, if you don't understand. Could not follow. Anyone? Either talk or either ask in the chat. Anyone? No. Uh, Tehila, it's okay. You can follow. Tehila Cohen, can you follow? Is it okay? No answer from Tehila. Okay, either she didn't understand or she doesn't want to reply, to respond. Okay, anyone else? Uh, uh, Obi, Mr. Obi, could you follow what I, you just saw? Yeah, I'll just finish. It's okay, bye. All right. Thank you. Okay, so this is my road. Now, here, I don't want to end up like this because I will have a problem here. I want to create a side ditch. How do I do it? I can do it either from this side or from this side. It's not so important, let me do it here. Since I have only two tables, which I can see together, I have to flip. I have many tables here. Let me go to the table that says right ditch. By the way, it's not so important where you put it. Uh, I'll put the structure, I can put it here if I want, right ditch. So whatever, wherever you want to put it, just put it. Okay, let's put it here. Now there are a lot of parameters. I'm not gonna talk about all of them unless you have specific questions, but I will start defining my outside ditch. So the ditch is from here. Ditch from here goes, we know it's one by one. So the left embankment of the ditch would be one to one and the right embankment, embankment of the ditch would be one to one as well. The bottom of the ditch would be 0 0.6. Now the question is, what would be the depth of the ditch? And also the question if the ditch, now we're in cut situation, so definitely I want to ditch, but if it will be filled, do I want still to do a ditch or I don't want to do natural drainage? 
What I am decided to do, I want to say in cut for sure, you do a ditch at 0 0.5 meter depth. In fill, uh, also do 0 0.5 meter. So these are the definition, let's see. Okay, this is in cut, so the software took the zero, the cut situation, it went 0 0.5 meter below from here and gave me 60 cm width and one embankment, one to one, second embankment, one to one, and close up. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Most of all, that you know the software very well. Any question about what we see here? No. Okay. Okay. Please remind all um, that this is the time to ask advanced questions because some of you know the software very well. Now, some it's new to them. So, and this lesson is to everybody. Okay, so I assume no questions. So, this is the typical session. And now, I'm doing the same trick that I did in the former training. How do I project it all over? Because it's now only on section zero, the rest are still empty, right? I'm going to zero. I press cut button here. And I copy all the data into the clipboard, into the memory. I'm going to the last section, which is at uh, 96. So the total road length is 960.15. And I paste. So this is the last section. And now I tell the software interpolate. Now the software will do interpolation for all the empty sections that we have. But we see the interpolation did not include, did not include the side ditch. So I want to also project the side ditch. I go to first section or last section, it's not so important. Let's go to the first section where I started. I'm going to the right ditch, which I want to project standing on this cell. And please listen carefully to the procedure. I stand here. I press right click at the mouse and the software asks, send the whole ditch to other sections. I said, yes. To which section? I said, all. And I press apply, okay. That's it. If I'll go and sorry, and of course I need to reinterpolate. Why to reinterpolate? Because what interpolation does beside completing empty section is also to rebuild existing sections. So all the sections now have side ditch on the right. Was it clear? Do I need to expand again to repeat? Too complicated, not complicated at all. Guys, come on. Usually it's not that easy. Nancy, can you follow? Nancy, Florida. You need to me to explain again and see. No, no, no answer from Nancy. Taylor, maybe any questions? Any question? None. Guy, are you okay? Guy Mao? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm following. Yeah, Guy, remind me from which company? Eshet? Eshet, yeah. Me okay. and Nelly is here as well. 
תהילה איזו סופה מבקשת דאשת? לא. לא, אוקיי. 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 So this is the road. So if I want to see the layout, I press this button, create layout, press OK, and I'll get everything here. You see? Everything is here. So this is the layout. And I also see the ditch. This is the bottom of the ditch here. I can see the flow direction, so if I want, I can take this flow direction. And this is the flow direction. Okay, this is what I've designed. Now, so far, it's very sim similar to what we saw last training. It's just that I did it more complicated. I did with, uh, to the right, I did, uh, Uh, shoulders and to the left I created the sidewalk right this is the sidewalk and uh, it's dual length dual lane and I want now to create a super elevation so the subject now is super elevation how do I super elevate on the curve So the transition, we know it starts somewhere here. Where is it? Here it is, this one. This is the transition, right? Let's give it also. See that down. Okay. So we see the transition, we see start from here, end up here. This is the runoff. And from here we are in full curve. So 30 meter transition. So here I want to create super elevation and from here to continue super elevation until the end of the curve here. And this is the back transition. So what I'm gonna do, roads, that the cross sections are here, I don't need to, okay. I'm pressing the super elevation button, which sits here, super elevation. And the software displayed the geometry of the road. It says you have, Only one curve on IP1, freeze the name of the road, IP1, right? Just to remind you what I'm talking about. This is the IP, right? And this is the curve. So going back, super elevation. The geometry is like that. You have a left turn on IP1 with a transition of 30 meter, which start at this station or change if you like. So tangent spiral, the spiral start at 274 meter from the beginning of the road. The spiral turn to full curve to the left to radius of 400 meter at 304. The curve continue to go back to spiral at 700 and the full back from spiral to transition to tangent 756. So this is the analysis of the geometry, which is software did for us. Also, what we are looking at, we are super elevating segments minus one plus one, which is the asphalt. This is what the software choose for us, but we can super elevate others as well. And I can design by myself, or I can tell the software do an automatic. So if I go to super elevation here, the software, okay, said, the design speed, let's say 80 meter, The lane width is 3.65, right? And the normal slope is minus 2.5. And okay. Okay, the software says there's a warning. For this split, the clotoid and cluto out are too small. 
but it would still continue to calculate. It said the transition for V speed of 30 meter and 30 meter are too small. We'll deal with it. But this is the result for minus 2.5. The transition start here and up here at 5.05% and end up like this. That's if I'm happy, I press OK. And that's it. Let's go to where was it? Uh, okay. no. At uh, 280, let's for example, 280, ah, 75. You see, this is in the middle of the transition. In the middle of the transition, this is 2.3. And here I'm already completely 0 0.4. And I told him not to super elevate the shoulders, so the shoulders continue to fall into the side ditch. Five, this is the maximum. Five, I'm in the curve, five, five, in the curve, in the curve. Still. Okay, here is coming back. That's it. Fine. I'm okay. So this is what I got. By the way, I saw something interesting. I saw, okay, let's leave it like this. And now let's recalculate the layout. Now we were supposed to see the transition here in the design elevation, design contour sum. Here it is. Okay, excellent. From here, we're transiting into a full wind side slope. Again here, and transition again to the left. That's it. This is how I created the super elevation. This is how I created the super elevation. Now I want to do something else. I want to also create a, a, some kind of super elevation here on the core, but this is a very slow speed road. You know what, let's do it in, in phases. Let's first of all deal with this road. And the subject now is how to change the alignment. There was a question raised by uh, Rose from RCC, how to add an IP. So I'll do two things here. First of all, I will increase the length of the, transition from 30 to 40 meter, because you remember I had the error alert on the system. I'll do the same here, 40 and 40. And I would also add an IP, a new IP here. I would break the road going into row here, this point, sorry, this point. And from here go straight. So I'll change completely the alignment. So again, the thing that I'm gonna discuss now is how to change the alignment. And in this case, I will change the alignment in two ways. First of all, I will increase the length of the transition. And second, I will add another IP here. We already know how to move an IP. So now I'm doing two different things. I'm adding an IP and I increase the length. Now, also something that we have to be very careful or cautious about is that now we have a full design. So unlike before, we just moved the IP or when we have the full design, we have to be very extra careful and you'll see the steps that I need to follow. So please listen up. We are recording everything and we'll upload it. Uh, I remember we still have an open depth to all of you to upload the formal lesson. We already uploaded them to the YouTube. We will very soon share it with you. Uh, so again, what I want to do are two things now, changing the alignment by increasing the runoff, the transition, and then add an IP here. Let's start. I'll go to the horizontal alignment. First of all, I'm changing the transition. This is easy, changing it to 40. And this is 30. This is the first thing. If I will press apply, the system will automatically change everything accordingly. 
but it's not complete. You will have to do to see what I will have to do, do in addition. Generally, it's very simple. I change it to 30 and everything changed to 30. It's that easy, but you'll see that we have to do other things. For example, the super elevation now, it's still from the 30 meter. And the length of the road might change also as the reaction of this 30 meter. And another question thing that I want to do is to add another IP here. How do I do it? I'm going to the design coordinates. You remember that I use the design coordinates to move the, the coordinate of the IP when I wanted to move a little bit the road. Now I'll use the same technique, but what I'll do, I'll add another coordinate here. It's an up road, especially for you. The IP is here. This is the exact point that I want to use. This one. I'm using peak to create another point. The system will call it peak point 1005. Why? This is what the software wants. I can change it. I, I will change it later. 1005, I'm happy. And I will put it somewhere here. Or well, you know what? Exactly here. We focus now. So I have a new, for now, it's not an IP. It's just that I've added a point here. Right? There's a new point here. If I press refresh, I suppose to see this point. Here it is. It's just a point. It's not an IP. But now I'll go to the table of the road. I will stand on free IP2. Why on free IP2? Because I want to, this new IP will come between IP1 and IP2. IP2 is the end of the road here. And IP1 is here. So I'm standing here on the table and I'm pressing enter on my keyboard. Sorry, enter again. I have a new line here. Actually, I could do it with right click, insert row, instead of doing it, I forgot. On 10.2, you, you don't need to do enter, you just stand here, right click on the mouse and insert row. It's something that we had on 10.2 in 2016, you don't have it version. Okay, I've added another road here. And I enter another IP. The name of the IP is 1005. This is the name that the software gave it. Gave it. By the way, if I want to change it, I can call it, I'll come here to the point, to the editor, and change this name of the point to be free IP 122. This is the name of the IP. It's a new IP. And refresh. For now, it's just a point, right? It's not IP yet. It will become an IP once I add it here. And now I'll call it free IP 1.2. By the way, I could use 1005. It's not important. It's just for me to help everything look good for me. That's it. If I press apply again and apply, the software will change the alignment to go through this point. Here it is. See what happened? The road change to go through because it's part is an IP now. Through this IP and move back here. You see what happened to the alignment. Sorry, to the design. We have a longer road, so it's not complete. We'll do it very soon. But this is what we did. Okay, I'm unhappy from here. I want to continue to this, to here. How do I do it? Um, what I'll do like this, extend, and let's say this, and okay. I continue to do a straight line to here, okay? If I want to a straight line, or if I want a straight line, it's not an IP. You know what? Change it a little bit, of, okay. Let's say, okay. I want to move the curve to go to this point. So I want to move this IP. We already learned how to move an IP. Go to horizontal alignment. We press the move here. 
we touch the IP, say from this point to where we want to move it. Let's say I want to move it here. Let's press apply and then I'm in change. Okay, fine. So this is my road and let's enter a curve here. The curve here will be 50 meters, it's quite sharp, 100 meters. I don't know if it's too long, let's see if it's overlap, no, no overlap, it's okay for me. Okay, this is it. And I want to even open it more, 200 meters, 250, let's see. Okay, I'm happy. This is my road. This is my road. But a lot have changed. Let's see what happened to the profile. If I go to roads, vertical alignment. Okay, first of all, automatically the software show us the invert level of the right ditch. The right or the left, right ditch. Okay, this is, you see here, right ditch, and this is the invert level. If I want it, I can leave it here. If I want to move it, I can just undo here. And that's it. Okay, let's deal with the side ditch later. Now, what's important for me is that alignment change. So first of all, the existing ground level that we see now, still reflects the former alignment because this is what it has in the table. So I'll have to go into the, to here to the lower left and tell the software, get T. The software will do it. And if I press apply, now I'll get the existing ground level of the new alignment. It's a little bit changed. I'm not sure you saw here, the change is minimum, probably here somewhere, the change. So again, the alignment change, but the topography is still from the former alignment. So I have to refresh it. How do I do it? I press the get T button here. It will override the existing ground level with the new, digitize the new alignment and press that, okay. About the profile itself. I'm okay with this profile. The only thing that I want to continue because now the road is longer, you see? The road, the former road ended at 960. But now I have longer. How much longer? 987, I can see it here. 987.42, see? This is the end of the road. So I have additional 17 meter here. What I'll do, I'll do it very simple. I will do a polyline here, extend, okay. So I extended, I can remove this. The var edit up till here, and we press apply. Let's see. And the software automatically cut it at the end of the road. That's it. So now also the profile is okay. So I started with the horizontal alignment, I changed it. Then I went into the profile. First of all, I pressed the get T to get the new ground level at the new alignment. And then I, since I saw that the road now is longer, I had to continue the design. Now let's go to the cross sections. First of all, I will get the existing ground level because again, the location of the cross section of at least some of them changed. So I had to reread the cross sections ground level, the existing ground level according to the new alignment. Okay, in the beginning it's the same, but in the rest it will change. And I will tell the software interpolate because we said what interpolate does, first of all, it and, uh, uh, fill in empty section, but also rebuild all the sections. So maybe some of the section now, like this one, you so saw this one, which had problem. So now the software have to rebuild according to the new existing ground level, very simple.
The next thing that I want to do, everything is okay. The only problem that I have now is that my last section end up, we know, at 960. And the last section, actually section is 987.42. You see the difference? Because again, we have additional 17 meter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stand on the land section and I'll tell the software, I'm changing this section. This would be zero plus 975. How do I do it? Very simple. First of all, I changed its name, which will not do anything. But I also changed the running distance, the station. And this will completely change the location of the section. So this is only the name. The name can be AAA if you want, but this is what important. The location, 75 meter. Okay, if I click on it, you see it's new because the former one deleted. I created a new one here. And I'm going to the next row and zero plus 987.32. If I want to call it like this, I can just put it like this. Whatever I want, we will call it N. Whatever I want to call it. I will for my 32. But the most imp more important is its location. Location is 987.32. So, sorry, my question, not plus, like this. And zero plus. That's what I wanted to do. Like this. Okay, so I have two new sections. This is 950, which is okay. I have also 975 and I have 987.42. Two new sections, which I've just created. What I do, first of all, to the software, again, press this button. You see this button here get the existing ground level of all the sections, including the new section. So it will not do anything to the rest of the section, but this one will get a new. Okay. I send it 950, copy to the clipboard. I can go to the last one and do interpolation, or you can just go to 975, paste, press apply, 997, paste, press apply. That's it. Let's do the layout. Oh, okay. there's an, uh, something that the system will soon look at. This. this is a report that the system did for me. Very soon I will look at. Just that's it. Everything was rebuilt. By the way, what the software did tell me, and I did interpolation, it created this report. Okay, let's see it's below. Where is the report? Somewhere here. No, anyhow. So this is what I, I did. But we have another thing. First of all, now it's 40 meter here and not 30. So the super elevation should change as well. And now there's a new curve here, which you can see from the contours, there's no super elevation at all. We didn't design it. So I'll press the super elevation again. Geometry station in super elevation table do not match the center line. Okay, the software find, found out that there's a new geometry and automatically it says that everything is incorrect. So we have to press overwrite to recreate the geometry which the software did. You see, so this is the geometry I got in to the new geometry of the road. Now it's, this is 40 meter, 40 meter, and this is the transition. There's no transition. There's no transition curve here because it's a, a small thing. So how do I do it? If I press here and go by the same parameter. Okay. E Interesting. Okay, the software proposed something. For this, it's okay. But let's look what happened to this one. 
Okay, here, so let's see. For free IP one, it says, we are starting here, the runoff at this station. Mm, something, okay, 342. No, it doesn't make sense to me. It's, it's a mistake. It's a mistake with the software. It's a mistake with the software. Because I, ah, okay. It, the software suggested that we'll continue with this slope till the next, probably because we are very close. No, I'm not sure it's a mistake. To continue with the transition here all along. But for the case, for our case, I will do it separately. So again, let me go to the super elevation. Okay. And I altered the software like this. Here, here, you are starting. The same. So here you are started at minus 2.5, minus 2.5. And we saw already we want to super elevate to attending to the left. So left will go to minus 5.1, and right will go to 5.1. And the same go to minus 5, minus 5. And coming back to Minus 2.5, minus 2.5. From here, so this is for the first IP. That's it. Let's see. So this is for this transition. Okay, so this transition I've completed here. Now it's okay. With the 40 meter. Now what's going on here? For now, there's no transition here. Okay, there is a trans small transition that the software did. Let's define the transition. Here, what I want to do, I want to create a new row to the software. You are starting 20 meter before the tangent. So you are starting at the tangent is for 852. I will start at 832, 20 meter be below, before. And I have end up 10 meter after. I've created a runoff 20 meter before the tangent because I don't have a spiral here. So I've created a, 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 a super elevation, a runoff, 20 meter, it's at 20 meter before the tangent and then up 10 meter after the tangent. Here it's minus 2.5. And let's say side slope at the, to the left. Yeah, it's like this. And the same goes here. Stand here, right click insert row, and from here, minus 2.5, 2.5, and sorry, here I will enter, start 10 meter before the tangent, and end up 20 meter after, 967.70, and end up at minus 2.5, minus 2.5. Press okay, that's it. Here it is. This is the first transition, super elevation going here. Here's the straight line, the tangent itself. Straight, minus 2.5. And here, this is the tangent. 20 meter before the tangent, I started super elevating until 10 meter after the tangent. And going back here. Questions? Quite complicated, but uh, worthwhile. Any questions? 
Rose, did I answer your question how to add an IP? Yes, sir. Yes, it's okay? It's okay now. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That's it. I finished my design. So let's summarize what we did. We created a side ditch. Sorry, we started designing a road with a transition curve. We created a side ditch and then create super elevation. Then the software alert that the transition is too small and Rose said that I'm unhappy with this road, change it to a new alignment. So I did two things. First of all, I increased the transition. Then I ended another IP here. I added this IP. Then I went into vertical, completed the road, go to cross section, completed the road. That's it. Guys, five minutes break. And we continue from where we start, from where we ended. Five minutes break, then we talk about something that we called something that we call extract. So let's start with cross sections. The first section, first question will be. The first question would be, uh, the first issue would be about the cross-section itself. When drawing the polyline for center, is it 2D or 3D? 2D was the question. When I draw the polyline for the alignment, was it 2D or 3D? Standard 2D. Now, I want to show you something, to explain something. Each cross section here is, is a separate entity. It's done by itself. That means that we can deal separately with each cross section. Let's see what it's good for. Let's assume here, when I'm crossing here, I want to extend a little bit this and make the road here wider. In fact, let's do another thing. From station, sorry, 200 till station, 750. From 200 to 750, I want the right lane to be wider. How do I do it? Roads, cross sections. I'm going to 200. And I'm going to the right lane. And the right lane, I'm going to the structure. And instead of seven meters, 700, Sorry, instead of 7.3 meter, I will change it to 9.3. And to ensure that I'm with the same slope, I'm going to the slope and ah, you see it changed the slope. So let's change back to minus 2.5. 2 this is what I did. I went into segment minus one, the asphalt segment and change it from 7.3 to 9.3. When I did it, I also have to ensure that the slope, the slope changed, so I take it, took it back to 2.5. And I press apply. Here it is, you see? Now it's 9.3 meter. But the problem is that I have not done the same for the subgrade. So I'm going to the subgrade and we said, additional two meter. So here, I will change it again, 9.5 and minus 0.5, let's see. Excellent. So 
What I have done, I took section 200 <coughs> and make it instead of 7.3 meter to the left, 9.3 meter. I took it two meter wider. By the way, if you look at the layout, it will look something like that. Let's, let's go to 200. Let's see 200 is here somewhere. And it will finish refreshing, I will zoom in. Okay, where is it? Ah, change to the left, not to the right. This is the change which I did. It's my mistake. Let's go again to 200. Structure. This is 7.3, minus 2.5. And this is 9.5, minus 2.5. Okay, now, sorry, minus 2.5. My mistake, I wanted to change the right lane. Right lane, no. No, it was correct. Ah, okay, the right lane, yes, outside. The lane on the right, let's see. Yeah, the right lane. So 9.3 at minus 2.5. And 9.3 at minus 2.5. Okay, right lane. This one. Right? And if I want to create the layout, 200 is here. It will narrow down this and it's supposed to widen this one. Yeah. Okay, you can see from here. See? It went wider. See from here to here, it went wider. You know the break line, there's a break line here. Let's give it, uh, I don't know. It can be nice, like this. Okay, good. So, okay, so from here, which is 7.3, now the width here is 9.3. But here it goes back to 7.3 because I change only this section. So what I'm gonna do, I stand on this section and the very different ways how to do it because what I want to do now is to project the change which I did from 200 until 750 until here. I can delete the sections and then fill it up but there's, an, there's a faster way. I'm standing at 200 and standing on this on the segment which I changed. I changed this segment, right? I stand on it, click, left click, so I will stand inside, and then right click in the mouse. It says send to. Now tell them send, in fact, not this one, the entire segment, not this row. So if I want to the entire segment, I stand on the, you know what I can do with this one again. Send to right which section from 200 until shift 750. And the slope as well, right? So send the slope again from 200. 700. Good, but I also did it here. No, ah, not left. Again, my mistake, right, the same thing. Send to 200 to shift 750. This, this one, send to from 200. 750 and the same here on the design on the subgrade.
good. Let's see their effect. And now I will rebuild, interpolate. Now all the section from 200 supposed to be wider, 200. This is 9.3, let's go to the next one. 9.3, you see? All the sections have been rebuilt with the new width. If I put it on the Here it is, from here, like this, yeah. But see what happened. I, because what I did, I also override the super elevation. So what I need to do is go back and tell the software again, super elevation, affect it again. That's it. And let's see that out. Excellent. So now what I've done from here, I've widened my road from right lane from 7.3 to 9.3 and change it back at 750. 750 is here, here, see? From here, it's going back. From here, going back to here, 9.3 to 7. Any questions? Any questions? So this is the first thing. First thing we learned is that each section has its own, it's an entity. You can change it, you can do whatever you want with it. More questions. More questions about what you just saw. None. No questions. Okay, good. The second thing that I want to show is a trick you see here you remember when i started design there was existing a path which was on break line there i want to mark on this you know it start here and then here i want to mark this break line on the cross sections. I want to show this, not, not this one, maybe this one. No, but this is it's perpendicular, we will not see anything. Okay. So what I'm trying to do now is to present on the cross section, this and this, which is the existing uh, pathway, just to show it, visualization. So. In construction, it will be identified. So what I'll do, since break line, it's a big layer with many, many things, which I don't want to see. I only want to see these lines. I will create a new layer and I'll create it. I will call it a, a existing path. And I will make it, again, uh, yellow is something that we can see easily, yellow. For now, I'm working with AutoCAD. And I will take this and this. This is the path that I want to see. Maybe this one as well. And continue this one, and this one. These are the things that I want to see on my, yeah, up till here. I want to see on my cross sections. And I will change them. This I'm doing in AutoCAD. For now, I'm just working with AutoCAD. And instead of layer break line, I would call them existing path. I isolate them. Good. So what we saw, okay, this is the existing path, right? See the yellow. And I want them to project them on the cross sections here. How do I do it? I go to roads, cross sections.
and I'm looking that calls something that called reference. I'm clicking it here. He asked me which layer do you want to show? I can either select it or select like this. Select this. This is the layer, existing path. I could also scroll and find it. And I press OK. See what happened. Filtering was finished successfully. If you want to return, press OK. And let's see. See what happened? It projected this layer as a reference to the SOC section. So this is section 50. What we see on section 50 is this and this, which is the existing path. You can see it here. Also on 75, it's on the right side. 100 is here, 25 here. 50. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? Any question about the reference? Guys, any question about the reference? By the way, with data which was extracted, if we flip to reference here, you'll see. No questions? Anyone? Right to speak up. Sure. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. Now, I'm gonna use something else. Okay, someone asked me a question. Please, can you repeat this reference procedure again? Okay. Reference is being used when we want to take something from that exists in our, that exists exist in, in the field and we want to project it on the cross sections. In this case, I used it to take this existing path and project it on the cross section. How did I do it? Did I do it? I went into cross sections and I create reference. You see, this is existing. Now I will do something else. Let's assume, let's take another scenario. Not here, let's go here. Let's assume there's a water pipeline that goes somewhere here. So let me crawl, create water pipe. Oh, you know, electricity line. Electricity line, LA. I'll make it um, yellow so you can see it well. Make it bright. Okay. I know that there's electricity line that goes Sorry, from here, okay. I got it from my client, from the Sauveur. Okay, this is the electricity line. For now, I have it, only have it in 2D. If it was in 3D, it was better, but it's only 2D polyline. This is what I have, this is the data. I'm going to the cross sections. Now for us, it's in the last, se last sec se uh, sections, it's around here. Section 950. So we have to look at something where here. It's not so important because the software will cut all along, but it should appear somewhere here. So how do I do it? I'm pressing the reference this button. 
And that software asked me which layer your reference that. Now, if for example, it can be that there are many electricity lines, so all of them would be cut. It's not just a certain specific one polyline, it can be many. So electricity, I can go into the list or I can select and it will find it automatically. But if I go in the list, click here, Ele, and that's it, and press OK. Successful. If I'll go now to, to see what happened, this is the electricity line. This is the electricity line. It's from the center, 5.3 meter to the left. It says this is the, here it's 10 to the right. So the software took, for example, section 875. and translate this point in the intersection between the cross section and the line and convert it into a graphic display here on the left. By the way, this data, the translation is 5.3 meter to the left here. The data is shown here. Here it is, electricity. electricity. Now, since it's a 2D, the software could not do anything. We just, the offset. But if I know, for example, that this is a pipeline that lies uh, one and a half meter below the ground, or let's say three meter below the ground, I can just put here and put three meter. And I also know that uh, the diameter in centimeter is uh, 10 cm. If I press up, apply, see what happened? This is 30 cm. This is the data. And the software know how to bury it three meter in the ground. And this is the input level. Sorry? Sorry? Okay. But of course, it was only done here. What about the rest? Because I change only specific. So how do I do it? I'm using the same trick that I used before. I'm standing on the depth, left click, right click, send to current cell, yes. If I send to all, I think it will work automatically. Yeah, you see, I sent to all, but the software was smart enough to know, the software was smart enough to know that when it find reference with the L name, this is where it stick the three meters. So I'll do the same to the 10 cm. And all. So the software, when I send all, went to the section. When it found LA, it put the diameter inside. So you see now we have the pipeline all along. So this is another usage of reference. Reference, again, I use it for two things. Here I used it to show an underground infrastructure that cross my section. So, and here, I've used it to show an existing path. This one, existing path. Where exactly is the location of the existing path and the cross section in reference to the path? How this explain the reference? I think it's too much information. So I think I'll stop here. I will do the extract maybe quickly at the beginning of next lesson. Next lesson is mainly about a pipelines, underground infrastructure. But we will start maybe with extract. I will do it very quickly and go and go to underground infrastructure. 
how to design water supply, and sewage, drainage, and so on. Questions, guys? Before we wrap up, yes, there was a question here. Do we have discussion about road intersections? Not in this um, training. And in fact, I have to be honest with you. Um, I have to, you talk about junction, how to arrange uh, junctions like uh, this junction, for example. Assuming that one. There is a model for it here. We call it junction definition, but uh, at 75 to 80% of the situation, it will not give you a good result. Maybe in this one, it will, because it's a T junction, very simple, but in 80%, it will not. So unfortunately, until we solve it, uh, what you have to do is to do design the intersection manually, meaning go by the section and do the change in the stops in the intersection by yourself from here, from the cross sections. Go to the cross section that goes into the intersection and design. So until you have these contours and these contours, it goes the same. Sorry, but this is the only solution I can offer today. And in anyhow, I didn't plan to discuss about it, but yeah. Other questions, please. Other questions? Other questions, guys? No. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, don't forget next week, last lesson, Thursday, same time.